You did not play necessarily with Tony Gwynn here in, in, the, in the bigs, but when's the first time you did play against Tony? Uh, I played against Tony in Puerto Rico, 1983. He was playing with San Juan and I was playing with uh, Caguas. And I just remember uh, seeing him hit and going, wow, this guy is just so smooth and he can just flat out hit line drives in both gaps. And uh, just remember thinking how kind of amazing he was. And then the following year, we were both in, we both made the all-star team. We were in San Francisco. I remember talking to him in the outfield. Uh, you know, all of a sudden we were both rookies in, in '84. I think he won a batting title, and I won a batting title uh, that year. And he kept winning batting titles, and I quit winning them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have had any inclination way back then, back in '83, and, and that you that what type of player he would turn out to be? I don't think you have the indication this guy's going to be a 3,000 hit guy because you, at that point we're both minor league guys trying to get to the big leagues, and I didn't know anything about Tony Gwynn other than seeing him in winter ball going, wow, this guy can really hit. And uh, so at that point, no, but seeing his swing, you think, man, this guy can really hit. And that's the one thing that we definitely, I could definitely see. Yankees captain, one of the great all-time Yankees, and Tony Gwynn was Mr. Padre. What, I, I, you guys didn't play each other in the bigs, but what type of player, what type of admiration did you have for him as a baseball player? Oh, just watching Tony over the years, seeing every year he's hitting 360, 370, it seems like. And, uh, you know, him and Boggs, we were, Boggs were a lot alike. They both hit for that real high average, uh, hit the ball to left field a lot. Tony kind of made an art form out of it. And then as just time went on, Tony was a great outfielder. And I know the one year, kind of him and Boggsy both, I don't know if it was the same year, but they both went out and hit like 20-something homers one year. All of a sudden, they kind of said, oh, Tony doesn't hit homers. He hits, hits homers, drove in 100, I think, that year. And just watching him over the years just kind of make it an art form. You know, I was a big Rod Carew fan. And Tony's a lot like Rod, which is just like batting title after batting title. And it's like kind of like, oh, who's going to be second? You know, we all know about what he did on the field, but I still think that, think that his biggest legacy will be his kid. And that would be Tony Gwynn Jr., who you got to manage. What kind of a special kid was he, and what could you see about his dad through his son? Uh, Tony was Jr. was great, and just the mentality of playing and the kind of person he was, a great kid and a great person. And I remember Tony coming into the locker room, and just like any other dad, he'd sit in the couches. He wasn't talking a lot or running around. Really? You know, uh, he was great. He was just sitting there relaxing. And he actually actually had him talk to our club one day about hitting. I know he had to be a little careful because he's just working for the Padres and doing the, uh, the TV and stuff. But he still talked to our club about hitting. And uh, you know, it was a special special day that day, getting him to, to kind of talk to our guys. Davey, is it possible to put into words how special a player Tony Gwynn was? Absolutely not. Uh, Tony always had a smile on his face. Uh, he never tried to big league anyone. He was always available. If you want to talk about hitting baseball, he loved talking about baseball. Uh, and he was even a greater man off the field, as great as he is on the field. How much time would he spend? Listen, this is the guy with all the batting titles, all the accolades behind him. How much time, though, even towards the latter part of his career, would he spend watching video and, and perfecting his game? Well, he was way ahead of the curve when it came to that. Uh, so that tells you something about his, his cognitive thinking at that stage because he was way advanced. He, I guess Alicia carried around the equipment for him. He's, he's not going to do the heavyweight. He's going to make somebody else do that. That's Tony. <laughs> but, you know, and then um, I was fortunate enough to hit Tony Jr. He used to come out and work out all the time. And uh, one night, and Tony said to me, he said, Davey, you must have worked out Jr. pretty good. I said, why? He says, he said, because he fell asleep about five minutes after we got in the car on the way home. I said, well, you want to make him a good center fielder? We're going to have to work him. He just started laughing. So. You know, Tony was always available to, to anyone, and uh, you can feel it in the air, there's something missing here right now, and that's that presence of Tony Gwynn.